In today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial, you will learn two ways to make illusion of depth. First, you will see how to create depth illusion using 3D effect and opacity mask, how to adjust 3D settings to experiment with design, and then we'll see how to create illusion of depth using 3D effect, pathfinder, clipping mask, and freeform gradients. If you didn't use any of these features before, by the end of this tutorial you will know how and when to use opacity mask, clipping mask, 3D effect, freeform gradient, pathfinder, and will be able to use techniques that I will show you today to create stunning logo design or to use them in any illustrations that you will create. You are watching TNT Tutorials, let's move on and create a new document. You can download reference and colors by the link in the video description. Today I will use Arial Black, basically you need any bold font for such cases. Let's begin with first method. I will pick this letter, I for eyedropper 2. Let's pick this color, Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel, Preview. Here in position, select Isometric Top and rotate this cube like so. Here in Cap, let's select Cap Off and change Extrude Depth. If you don't see this panel, that means that you need to click here on More Options. You can play with Lightning Source, but we will do it just a little bit later. First of all, let's increase Blending Steps. I will apply this value, your value can be different. Let's click OK, let's press Ctrl-C, Ctrl-F. Let's make this layer invisible. And we will use this copied layer as mask shape for our base layer. Let's click on Properties, click on Applied Effect, Preview, select No Shading and click OK. Now Object, Expand Appearance. After this, Swap Fill and Stroke, Shift plus M for Shape Builder. Shape Builder is over here, and simply drag with Shape Builder to unite needed shapes, like so. I will hold Alt and use Scroll to zoom in. If you will see some parts like this, just drag with Shape Builder like so. For this case, it might not work, and if it didn't work for you here, just don't worry, we will delete this part a little bit later. For now, let's pay attention for such parts. Now let's press V for selection tool. And what you should know is that right now we have group inside of group. We don't need this. We need all objects to be ungrouped because basically we need only this shape. So let's click here on object, ungroup. Let's open this group. And what you should pay attention to is that you still have some groups. You can see them. You have group here, group here, and group here. Let's select this group first, right click, ungroup. Let's do the same with these ones. Now let's select all group, right click, ungroup. And after this, we will delete all unnecessary parts, one by one. Let's select this one also, and delete it. You should have this result. Let's select this shape, swap fill and stroke, and apply white color. Let's click here on color. Let's make this layer visible again. With white layer selected, press Ctrl C and make this layer invisible. You can even delete it. I will delete it to avoid any confusion. Let's select this layer, window, transparency. If this window will appear, somewhere here, drag it like so, and click here. Then click on this button to make mask. Select mask mode, just click on this black rectangle, and press Ctrl Shift V. If you don't understand what just happened, here is the answer. We're in mask mode, and in mask modes, there's only white color, black color, and all grades of gray. White color reveals objects, and black color hides. As you can see here, everything that is in black is hided, and all parts where we have white color are visible. If you will click here on color, select grayscale, and if you will move this slider like so, you can see that this object becomes less and less visible. Right now everything is in black, so let's apply white, and to return to usual mode, 
Just click on this icon. After this, Properties, click on Applied Effect, Preview, and now you can play with Lightning Source, apply it any way you want to. You can add even more Lightning Sources, and if you will adjust Light Intensity for this Lightning Source, let's decrease it here, it will be still 100% for this Lightning Source. So you can change values for each one of them. As you can see we have 30 here and 60 here. You can also play with ambient light to make everything brighter. If you don't like such bright reflections, as you can see here, select Diffuse Shading and they will look much softer. I will click OK and close Transparency panel. What you can also do is with this object selected, press Ctrl C, Ctrl F, Properties, Opacity and play with Blending Modes. Let's apply Multiply for example. Play with opacity. And as we're in multiply mode, that means that you can see shadows from this copied layer and you can still see original layer. So this will allow you to experiment with shadows even more. With the multiply layer selected, properties, applied effect, preview, and let's play with lightning source. I think that we need more shadow in this area, so I will move this lightning source like this. And I will change ambient light. And now let's make this layer invisible, just to see what results do we have. I think you get them an idea of how you can experiment with all lightning sources and with this method. The last thing that I want to explain you here is how to release object from mask. Let's select this object, window, transparency. Just click here on release. Enter any letter you want, click here on Applied Effect, play with Lightning Sources, Extrude Depth, and apply Opacity Mask just as I already showed you. To get this result, as you can see in reference, you need to use second method. So let's begin with second method. I will delete these layers. Also I will select this letter, Appearance, and I will delete this 3D effect. So with this letter selected, Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel, Preview, select Isometric Top, let's rotate this cube according to reference, you can rotate it absolutely as you want, let's select Turn Cap Off, adjust Extrude Depth, in this case we don't need all these options, I will click here on Fewer Options, and let's select No Shading, OK, Object, Expand Appearance, let's click here on Swap Fill and Stroke, press Shift plus M for Shape Builder, and now we don't need to unite all these parts. We need to separate this object to needed sections. For example, we need this section, we need this section, this one, and this one also. If you don't understand it right now, you will understand it just a little bit later. Now V for Selection tool. We need to ungroup everything. Object. Ungroup. Ungroup again. And as you can see in some layers we still have some groups. Let's click on Object again. Ungroup again. Now let's just pick unneeded parts. And delete them like so. You should have the same result, shape of needed letter, with sections. Let's select all these objects, select fill and stroke again. Right now we will use clipping mask and freeform gradient. What you should know about this method is that this method is very professional. There's nothing wrong with the first method, but if you want to keep full control on what you create, you should use this method, because you will always be able to play with shadows, to adjust them as you want, and get some really great professional results. First of all, let me show you why you should use Clipping Mask here. Let's select this object, press Ctrl C, Ctrl F, Gradient, Freeform Gradient. Let's select these points, delete them. For now we will need only one point. Let's double click on it, select black color, create another point, 
double click on it and pick white color. Then press V for selection tool, properties, opacity and let's change blending mode to multiply. Gradient panel, G for gradient tool. If you want to create another black point, just select black point and you will create another point with black color. If you need to create white point, select white point and create point with white color. Now you can adjust shadows like so. And here is why you should use clipping mask. If you will need to move some point like so, it will be deleted because you will move this point outside of border of this shape. And this is not very handy. I really don't recommend you to work like that. You should keep full control on what you create. So, what we will do right now. I will delete this layer, press M for rectangle tool, create rectangle like so. I will change color for this rectangle, just for you to see better. It really doesn't matter what color will you choose. And as we want to apply clipping mask for this object, we need to move this rectangle down. With this object selected, let's press Ctrl C, Ctrl F, then place this rectangle here, select these two layers, we selected copied layer of this object and this rectangle, right click, make clipping mask, V for selection tool, let's deselect this object, and if you want to pick this rectangle, and we want to pick it as we will create freeform gradient in this rectangle, you can open this clip group and select this rectangle or you can simply press A for direct selection tool and pick object in clip group. Now let's click here on gradient, freeform gradient, hold shift, let's select all these points, delete them, pick only this one, double click on it, black color, create another point, white color, V for selection tool, properties, Opacity, Multiply, let's open Gradient Panel, G for Gradient 2, and now you can move these points like so, because you are working inside of border of this rectangle, not inside of this shape. And this is very professional and very handy. To make gradients look even more alive, you can adjust slightly brighter colors here. And this shadow will look much more realistic, because in this place you should have the darkest shadow, and here you can have brighter shadow. You should also have points where light will fall. You can change diameter of these points, like so. If you deselected this object, remember that you can pick A for direct selection tool, pick this object, and press G for gradient tool. Also in cases, if you want to make smooth transition right here, you don't want darkness to appear between these two points, you can select lines, pick this point and connect it with this one. And to make this line curved, add point here and move it like so. If you want to make sharp corner here, hold out and click on this point. This will allow you to place points like so. And if you don't want to create lines anymore, just pick points and work with points. You don't need to always adjust new freeform gradient to each object. For example, let's create rectangle for this one. I will create rectangle. Let's find this shape, it's over here. Ctrl C, Ctrl F, place rectangle right between them. Select these two, right click, make clipping mask. I will pick this rectangle, I for eyedropper tool, and let's click on this gradient. G for gradient tool, and you have the same sliders, which you can quickly and easily manipulate. Like this. So this what clipping mask allows you. If you would not have clipping mask, you would be able to place this point only here. But we need to move it down, to have this result. And we are able to do this, because we have clipping mask. Now I will show you how to make realistic transition in such moments. Here we need bright part. And here we need some darker part. Let's pick lines. 
I will hold Alt, click here, because we need sharp corner. Now select points. Let's pick this point. Adjust some dark color here. Let's adjust some gray color here. Let's select lines. Switch to points. Let's adjust light gray color here, just to make realistic transitions. Always zoom out to see what results do you have. Also, you should check if you really have this depth illusion. If not, you should take care that in such parts, for example, you have some shadows. So let's pick this object, G for Gradient tool. Let's pick this point, create new point, and place it like so. Now, as you can see, this part looks much deeper. If you will zoom out, you will see that we really have some depth effect here. So to check if you're doing everything properly, you can zoom out even like so. And if you zoomed out and you can see that you obviously don't have any depth, that means that you need to work with shadows even more. I will create another rectangle for clipping mask. Ctrl C, Ctrl F. Select these two layers. Make clipping mask. Let's pick this rectangle. I for eye drop a tool. Let's pick this gradient. I will delete these points. Change color to white here. I also don't need these points. Let's place these ones like so. And you have great result here. Just take a look. If you have some simple objects like this, here we have some flat object. You should not use freeform gradient for such objects. You also don't need any clipping mask here. Just press Ctrl C, Ctrl F, Gradient, Linear Gradient, Properties, Opacity, Multiply, G for Gradient tool, and play with gradient like so. And what you can also do, you can pick all these objects and play with opacity. In conclusion, I would say that first method is obviously much faster, but with second method, you'll get much more professional results because you're in full control of all shadows. You should definitely keep in mind them both, because sometimes one is better than the other, and you should remember them to know which one to choose in specific cases. If you learned something new from this tutorial, drop a comment below, let me know if everything was clear enough for you and what you liked about this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, support this channel by clicking on subscribe and what's most important, by clicking on the bell icon to get notifications about newest tutorials from TNT. I would also appreciate if you will click thumbs up and will share this video. This was TNT Tutorials, see you in next videos!